straight. Look you, lay home to him. Tell him his pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace has screened and stood between much heat and him. I'll silence me even here. Pray you, be round with me. I him. warrant you! Fear me not! Now withdraw, I hear him coming. Huh. Mother! Now, mother, what's the matter? Ha Thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Why, how now, Hamlet? What now? Have you forgot me? No, by the rude, not so. You're the queen, your husband's brother's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. Ah, uh, nay then. I will set those to you that can speak. Come, uh, sit you down. Uh, uh, you shall not budge. You go not till I hold you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. What wilt thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help. What? Help. 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 How now, a rat? No, 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 no. 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 Tear no. for a duck. Oh, I am slain. Oh. oh, me. What hast thou done? Nay, I know not. Is it the king? What a rash and bloody deed is this! A bloody deed? Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother? As kill a king? Ay, twas my word. Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. Thou fightst to be too busy in some danger. Leave wringing your hands. Peace. Sit you down and let me wring your heart, for so I shall if it be made of penetrable stuff. What have I done, that thou darest wag thy tongue in noise so rude against me? Such an act that blurs the blush and grace of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, takes the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love, and sets a blister there, <laughs> makes marriage vows as false as Dicer's odes. Oh, such a deed, as from the body of contraction plucks the very soul, and sweet religion makes a rhapsody of words. Yea, heaven's face doth glow, uh, yeah. And this solidity in compound mass with tristful visage as against the doom is thought sick at the act. What act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Ah! Look you here upon this picture. And on this. <laughs> the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. Can you see what a grace was seated on this brow? <laughs> Hyperion's curls. The front like Jove himself. And I like Mars, the threaten and command. A station like the Herald Mercury, new lighted on a heaven kissing hill. A combination and form indeed where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband. Like a mildewed ear blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and fatten on this moor? Have you eyes? You cannot call it love. For at your age the heyday and the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? What devil was it then that thus hath cousined you at Hoodman blind? Eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, ears without hands or eyes, smelling sans all, or but the one true sense could not so mope. Oh, shame. Where's thy blush? Rebellious hell, if thou canst mute it in a matron's bones, to flaming youth let virtue be as wax, and let her melt in her own fire. Proclaim no shame when the compulsive order gives the charge, since frost itself as actively doth burn, and reason panders will. Oh, Hamlet, speak no more. Thou turnest mine eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and grated. Boxes will not leave their teeth. Nay, 
to live in the rank sweat of an semen bed, honeying and making love over the nasty stud. Oh, speak to me no more. These words like daggers enter into my ears. No more, sweet Hamlet. A murderer and a villain, a vice of kings, a cut purse of the empire that from a shelf the precious diet and stole and no. put in his pocket a king of shreds and patches. Save me and hover over me with your wings, you heavenly gods. What would your gracious figure? Alas, he said. Do you not your tawny son come to chide? But lapse in time and judgment, let's go by the passing of your dread command. Oh, say! Do not forget. This visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. But look. Amazement on thy mother sits. Oh, step between her and her fighting soul. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? <laughs> How is it with you? That you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air do all discourse. Oh, forth from your eyes your spirits wildly peep. And a sleeping soldiers in the alarm, your bedded hairs like life in excrements to start up and stand on end. Oh, gentle sun, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper, sprinkle cool patience. Whereon do you look? On him. On him, look you how pale he glares. His combination and form conjoined, preaching the stones will make them capable. Do not look upon me, lest for this piteous action you convert my stern effects and what I have to do will want true color. Tears perchance for blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? No, nothing at all, yet all that is I see. Nor do you nothing here? No, nothing but ourselves. Look you now, uh, look there as it steals away. My father, in his habit as he lived. Uh, even now, out of the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain. Such bodiless creation, ecstasy is very cunning in. Ecstasy? My pulse, as yours, does temperately keep time and makes us helpful music. It is not madness that I have uttered. Bring me to the test, and I will the matter reword which madness would gamble from. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past. Avoid what is to come. Do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Forgive me, that's my virtue. In the fatness of these Percy times, virtue of vice must pardon beg. Yea, curb and woo for leave to do him good. Heavenly, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. <laughs> Throw away the worser part of it, and lift the purer with the other half. Good night. Once more, good night. <laughs> And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For the same Lord I do repent. The heaven hath seen it fit to punish me with this, and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. I will bestow her, and answer well the death I gave her. So again, Mother, good night. <laughs> I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains behind. One word more, lady. What shall I do? Not this that I bid you do. But the bloke king tempt you again to his bed, pinch wanton on your cheek, call you his mouse, and let him for a pair of reachy kisses or a paddling in your neck with his damned fingers make you ravel all this out. That I am not in madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured, 
If words be breath and breath be life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England. You know that. Oh, alack. I had forgot. Tis so concluded on. There's letters sealed. And my two schoolfellows, whom I trust as I will adders fang, they bear the mandate. They have marshaled me to knavery. Let it work. For tis the sport to have the engineer hoist with his own petard. For my own part, I'll delve one yard below their minds and blow them at the moon. <laughs> tis most sweet when in one line two crafts directly meet. This lady shall set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Goodbye, mother. What? Indeed, this counselor is now most still, most secret, and most grave, who was in life a foolish, peating knave. Come, ma'am, to draw toward an inn with you. Good night, mother. matter in these sighs. These profound heaves you must translate. Tis fit we understand them. Where is your son? No, oh, my good lord. What I have seen tonight. What, Gertrude, how does Hamlet? Mad, as the sea and wind. When both contend, which is the mightier? In this lawless fit, hearing something stir behind the heiress, whips out his rapier, cries, a rat! A rat! And in this brainish apprehension, kills the unseen counselor. Oh, heavy deed! It had been so with us had we been there. His liberty is full of threats to all, to you, yourself, to us, to everyone. Alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be late to us who should have kept short, restrained, and out of haunt this mad young man. Where is he gone? To draw apart the body he hath killed, or whom his very madness, like some ore among a mineral of metal space, shows itself pure. He weeps for what is done. Oh, Gertrude, come away. The sun no sooner shall the mountains touch, but we will ship him hence. And this vile deed, we must with all our majesty and skill both countenance and excuse. Go, Guildenstern! <coughs> Friends, both go, join you with some further aid. Hamlet in madness hath Polonius slain, and from his mother's closet hath he dragged her. Go, seek him out, speak fair, and bring the body into the chapel. Make haste in this. Come, Gertrude. We'll call up our wisest friends and let them know both what we mean to do and what's untimely done. So haply slander may miss our name and hit the woundless air. Oh, come away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. 